Hey guys, my name is Max and welcome to Simple Biology. Today we're going to be talking about eukaryotic gene regulation. Now in the last video we talked about operons and how they're regulated and how uh, those prokaryotic organisms will regulate their genes and their operons. This video goes into the eukaryotic side of that um, and because every protein in your body has a corresponding gene, of course uh, gene regulation is going to be the way that the, that uh, us, that we as eukaryotes will make sure that the proper amount of each gene will be used in the proper places at the right times. And so that's why uh, gene regulation is so important in eukaryotes. So first off we have chromatin mo modification. Now chromatin is basically uh, just the, the stuff that you have. It's made up of DNA and, it's, and various proteins and this is just the diffuse mass of mostly DNA that is found in your nucleus. Now, um, histone proteins are these purple proteins. Uh, they're the ones that are involved in coiling up chromatin and making it uh, making it tight enough to fit into your nucleus. Tightly coiled chromatin is actually transcribed much less than loose chromatin. This is because RNA polymerase and those other uh, proteins involved in that can access the DNA more when it's loose than when it's tightly coiled. So there are two chemical groups that are actually added to various parts of your chromatin um, and that will play a role in, uh, in uh, making, the, making that transcribed or more, making the DNA transcribed more or less. So the first, the first one is histone acetylation. Now uh, acetylation is the addition of an acetyl group to those histone proteins and what this will do is this will decrease the amount of coiling. This will make the, uh, the chromatin more loose and in turn increase transcription. So histone acetylation will increase the transcription of those genes that are in that area. Next we have DNA methylation which is the addition of a methyl group uh, to the DNA within various base pairs. And when this occurs, when the DNA is methylated, this will decrease the transcription because it disguises that DNA from, uh, from the RNA polymerase and other proteins. And so DNA uh, DNA methylation will decrease the transcription of those genes. Next we have RNA processing which is also very important in regulating these genes uh, because <coughs> they can be regulated further on in this process. So um, first we have just kind of the basics. For every single uh, messenger RNA that's produced in your body uh, there will be there's this little uh, piece where your body will add a five prime cap, which is basically just a modified uh, guanine uh, nucleotide, and then there's also the poly A tail, which at the back end, at the, on the three prime side, a bunch of uh, a bunch of a a bunch of A's, a bunch of adenines are added to the other side. So you can see in these two uh, messenger RNAs, you got the five prime cap and you've got the poly A tail on the three prime side. So for every uh, messenger RNA that your body is going to make, it's going to add these two parts, which are going to play a role in, uh, in signaling and in transcription. Uh, next, if you just look, kind of look at the structure of a gene, for eukaryotes, they have what's no, what are known as exons as well as introns. So exons are the parts of the gene that, are, that eventually become expressed, that end, end up going through transcription and being part of the messenger RNA. With these introns, what are in the middle, they're not actually transcribed, and they'll be actually cut out before that messenger RNA will be sent to the ribosomes. So that next, the next part in the step is introns are cut out, while the exons are, are spliced together. The ex exons remain. Um, one interesting thing is that sometimes different portions of the gene are used as exons rather than uh, introns. So you can kind of see in this diagram. There's two different ways that the cell can splice those uh, that those that that RNA, uh, and this is known as alternative RNA splicing. So it can either form the uh, the messenger RNA with the three um, exon or the or a messenger RNA with the four exon. And so that's uh, that's interesting. And it what this does is it gives the, that gene much more diversity, and it can create many more proteins than it would be able to otherwise. Um, next, there are certain uh, protein factors that can prevent mRNA translation. So there are different uh, proteins that will um, maybe attach to either the three prime or the five prime end at that cap or the poly A tail. There's also other proteins that will disable the ribosomes uh, temporarily. 
And so there's just these protein factors that can prevent this all from being translated. And in this case, you would just have these messenger RNAs sitting in the cytosol waiting to be used. This happens a lot when you have unfertilized egg cells. They don't want to start growing until they've been fertilized because otherwise it's, you're just wasting an egg cell. Uh, but, the, uh, but after they're fertilized, these protein factors can be eliminated and then the messenger RNAs that are already there can instantly uh, start being translated. And so that's how that uh, can be helpful. There are also other factors that can determine when messenger RNA is broken down. As you might expect, the longer the messenger RNA is going to be functioning, the longer it's going to be in the cell, the more of the protein it'll be producing and the more it'll be translated. So the quicker it's going to be broken down, the less of the protein will be created. The last step at which uh, gene regulation can occur is with the actual proteins. And so um, by this point, you've already gone through, the, uh, through tra transcription and translation, uh, but there might be some more steps. First off, uh, proteins might need to be cleaved in the right locations before they can be functional. Uh, one of the best examples of this is insulin, which needs to have a segment cut off before it will actually work as a hormone. It, insulin is a hormone that is produced by your pancreas. Um, in addition, there are other, process, uh, other chemical modifications that can, that can be used on proteins in order for them to be functional. Maybe the protein needs to have a carbohydrate tail attached to it and it'll become a glycoprotein. Um, there are many other of these chemical modifications. I've just listed a couple of the most common ones. And then at the end of the protein's life, like mRNAs, proteins need to be broken down at some point in order to end their function. And this is involved in a process that uses uh, ubiquitin molecules. And ubiquitin is a very small protein. And proteasome complexes, which are multi-protein complexes, um, once the protein is labeled with ubiquitin, the proteasome will then take up the protein and uh, break it down into its amino acids. So uh, through, the, through the action of ubiquitin molecules and proteasome uh, complexes, proteins are broken down. And just like with mRNAs, uh, the quicker the proteins are broken down, the less of their function they'll have. The less they will, um, if they're enzymes, the less chemical reactions they'll help. If they're, um, you know, it, they'll be doing less of their function. And so uh, there are other examples of how eukaryotic genes are regulated. These are some of the, um, some of the most important, and for now it's just as simple as that.